Do you feel aroused? Sorry? Bit of a tingle. A what? In the trouser area. Before Andrew Lincoln took home two awards for his betrayal of badass zombie bashing sheriff Rick Grimes in the highest rated cable show in television history. Before Andrew Lincoln began his epic bromance with Norman Reedus, aka Daryl, both on and off screen. <laughs> Before Lincoln was banking $90,000 an episode with an estimated net worth of $8 million. At 4.30 in the morning with a mouthful of blood and raw chicken. It was the wrong call. Before Andrew Lincoln went through the ringer as he dragged audiences through the most intense, violent and emotional season premiere yet. I'm gonna kill you. All of Andrew Lincoln's family members had followed standard career paths like engineering, nursing and teaching. So when he decided to abandon his academic life after a fluke casting in high school play, his father wasn't going to allow it unless he really excelled. Luckily for Andrew, he had it covered. They're fucking with the wrong people. Man, this show is intense and I'm a massive fan. What's going on guys, my name is Mike McCrudd, documenting the life of Andrew Lincoln prior to zombie bashing, here for you on Before They're Famous. Now if you want to hear more about his character Rick Grimes, we got that covered for you on our newest series Before They're Fiction. On this channel we're covering some of your favorite comic book, video game and even folklore characters, so be sure to check those out and hit subscribe. In the meantime, let us know in the comment section down below what Walking Dead actor or actress you want us to document next. Key to survival in a in zombie apocalypse. apocalypse is to be very good friends with the writers. Andrew James Clutterbuck was born in London, England on September 14, 1973. His mother is South African and was a psychiatric nurse, while his father worked as a civil engineer. When he was a year and a half old, his parents moved him and his older brother Richard to Hall England. Sounds nice. Richard is a year and a half older and was more mature and academically minded, while Andrew was the complete opposite. He was competitive, loud, and liked to show off, making him a bit of a black sheep in the family. When he was nine, the family moved again to Bath. England, it sounds nicer. He was enrolled at Beach and Cliff School and while playing rugby, one of the teachers took note of his cocky demeanor and Andrew was recruited for his first stage role, playing Artful Dodger in Oliver. He actually auditioned to play Oliver, but he didn't get the lead part. He wasn't a leading man back then, apparently. You got to pick a pocket or two. He enjoyed this experience so much that he went to work at the National Youth Theatre in London for an entire summer. After that, he was determined to become an actor, but his strict dad wasn't going to let him abandon his studies that easily. He'd let him attend drama school only if he made it into at least five of them. So he went ahead and wowed dad and got into the prestigious Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. He had intentions at this time only to do classical theatre. He helped pay for school with a few odd jobs as a chef, as a bartender, a factory worker, and he helped out at London's National Youth Theatre. He also finally decided to take on a stage name. I mean, can you picture a guy named Clutterbuck doing this? Yeah, I didn't think so. Plus Clutterbuck, it's a bit of a ridiculous name. Andrew had a sight set on being a theatre actor and found work with the Royal National Theatre throughout school. Shortly after graduating, he won a role as a lead in the hit BBC drama This Life. His performance as the boyish Ed Cook landed in more similar screen roles on different BBC shows. These included The Canterbury Tales, Wuthering Heights and Teachers. For his role as a teacher, Andrew shadowed his brother Richard, who in fact was actually a teacher and it helped him prepare for the role. I wonder who he shadowed to be a zombie killer. Huh. Tough question. In 2004, he branched out from acting and sat in the director's chair for two episodes on Teachers, which turns out he was just as good at, snagging a nomination for Best New Director, but that wasn't the only thing he managed to snag. While on set, he met the daughter of Jethro Tall guitarist Gail Anderson, and the two married in 2006. Though he was making his way up the ladder in the UK, he still hadn't crossed over North American audiences. He had that small part back in 2003's Love Actually, where he held up signs declaring his love for Keira Knightley. But he wasn't interested in becoming America's newest bubbling romantic lead. He wanted something more. I am a complete 
moron. I apologize. I... If he was gonna come to America, well, he was gonna be playing American parts. God damn it! God damn it! Cue AMC's newest drama venture, the adaption of a popular comic series, The Walking Dead. Casting was eyeing Andrew for their lead character of Rick Grimes, a hardened, gun-toting, flawed hero. And it don't get much more American than that. Not only did he get the part, well, Andrew was on contract for a possible six seasons. Not a bad gig. With the role being his, Andrew headed to Atlanta early to perfect his American accent. And how did he know he was doing a good job? Well, he began ordering coffee and fried chicken, trying out his accent on the locals to see if they could tell he was putting it on. No chicken? Uh, they just had a chicken. As for the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is before their fans. The Cubs are systematically hunted down. At this no. Time. No. <laughs> now we do have this new channel before their fiction, and on there we've made a video on Rick Grimes' character, how they came up with it, the development of it, the casting choices. And if you want to know more and you're a fan of The Walking Dead, go over there. We've also done one on King Ezekiel, and we got one on Negan coming your way. So go over there and subscribe. I'll see you guys in another video.